Good morning, everyone. Uh, students, teachers, parents, school leaders, and our Sydney Metro team, and welcome to the Metro Minds STEAM Challenge. My name is Anne Purcell, and I'm the Deputy Executive Director of Communications and Engagement for Sydney Metro. Before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge the Gadigal peoples of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of the land where I'm meeting today, and I know we're meeting all over Sydney, so we're meeting on very different lands, I imagine. I'd also like to pay my respects to Elders both past, present and emerging, and extending my respect to all Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people here today on this call. So, since 2014, we've been proudly running our education program, Fast Tracking the Future at Sydney Metro. When we started the program, we only had the Northwest Metro in construction, and now we have one in operations and three in construction, which means we're meeting lots more people. More than 15,000 students have taken part in the award-winning program as we work with schools to give students an insight into the real-world infrastructure projects. Part of the program is the wonderful Metro Minds STEAM Challenge, where students pitch an innovative solution to some of the challenges we face when building a new railway through the middle of a big city like Sydney. And I noted when I was looking at all the videos that a lot of you went out and rode on the Metro in the Northwest, which is fabulous, because that's what we'll be seeing all through the city and out to our west and near the airport. Sadly, this year's STEAM Challenge finals event is, a, is very different from previous ones. I may have met some of you at the previous events. Students, unfortunately, won't be providing live pitches as usual, but instead we'll take a look at the incredible work of the six outstanding teams who have been recognised as finals online with all this technology. <laughs> it's been a particularly challenging 18 months for everyone, I know, and really, I really want to acknowledge and thank all the hardworking principals, teachers, students and parents that have joined us today. As the parent of a primary school and a high school student, my heart goes out to you. So we're excited to have schools from various parts of Sydney online um, because we are now, as I said earlier, in so many different areas building metros. But not only the schools that have made the finals, but hopefully all 14 schools that were involved in this year's competition. And today you'll hear the ideas from the top six teams. You'll also, uh, today we'll meet some of the members of our Sydney Metro executive team, including the Chief Executive, Peter Regan, Deputy Chief Executive, Rebecca McPhee, Executive Director of Projects, Tim Parker, and the Executive Director of Corporate Services, Joanna Hall. And each of our executives will be introducing the top teams. So now I would like to invite Peter Regan to welcome you all. Thank you, Anne. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe, uh, looking after each other. Also hoping though that today, um, this meeting and getting the chance to, to meet up online gives you all a bit of a break from um, what's been a pretty tough situation over the past few weeks. But uh, today, great opportunity uh, for us to have some fun and recognise some really great talent. So um, to summarise, over 10 weeks, students from schools that are close to the Sydney Metro alignment have taken on the challenge to use design thinking to create truly innovative solutions with real life applications. Long before someone came up with the term design thinking, the actual process behind it is being used by architects, by artists, by philosophers, by civil planners, often the innovators behind really complex design ideas. And there's a core ethos within design thinking that the design itself has social value. And so for the Metro Minds Challenge, our very talented finalists today have been asked to follow these six steps around design thinking. Firstly, to empathise, then to define, to ideate, to prototype, to test, and then to pitch, to pitch their concept. And it started uh, with a, a process of needing to get to know the Sydney Metro program, its customers and its stakeholders, and then it's ended up in a video pitch. And for our finalists today, it's ended up with a video pitch here to us today. It's also ended up leaving the judges along the way with an enormously difficult job. Um, of shortlisting the finals that we've got to today. And what makes this challenge, this STEAM challenge unique, is that Sydney Metro's engineers and our geologists and demolition experts and our data analysts, and environmental engineers, have been able to also get out of their day jobs and step into the classroom and meet the next generation. In fact, before the lockdown, and luckily we had done it before the lockdown, we had 17 ambassadors from across Sydney Metro visit 14 schools. So I just wanna call out those ambassadors and thank them uh, for their efforts and also thank the judges for the work that they've done as well. And when they visited the schools, they've had conversations with students about real challenges and real opportunities, and they've used real examples. 
And so our goal here is to help students build new skills and behaviours and new attributes and capabilities, but to do so in a fun way that also involves engaging with our experts and enjoying the challenge along the way. So here's a first video. It's a look at an example of one of the schools that we visited earlier this year. Today, we have been fortunate enough to have ambassadors visit us from Sydney Metro because our students are currently participating in the Metro Minds competition. The Metro Mind STEAM Challenge is a competition that Sydney Metro launched in 2017 to involve schools along the alignment, so the City South West, West and Western Sydney Airport alignments, to be able to engage with a real world problem and use the design thinking process along the way. So students from years 7 to 10 in schools along the alignments can participate in the program. We were lucky to have three ambassadors visit us from Sydney Metro and they went around to each group and the group was able to discuss their ideas with them, get some feedback and also just get a bit of an insight into the information about the Metro and how it was built and problems that maybe they're even solving for the future now. So it was a really great experience for our students. I've been told to speak to you guys because apparently you have all the best ideas. Is that true? Very flattering. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's really helped us to develop our idea. And I guess it's pushed it to new lengths where we can actually see it being implemented in real life. The STEM class are really passionate about developing real world, real life skills in both the areas of technology and engineering. And this experience has been really engaging for them because it gives them a real world opportunity to actually solve a real problem on the Sydney Metro. We can use recycled material for that. And so that reduces the emissions quite significantly. They've really helped us give us so much advice, for example, about how we can make it so sustainable, environmentally friendly, passenger convenience. It's just really been amazing. Project-based learning, we have found, is really beneficial for our students because everyone has different gifts or skills that they bring to a group. Having it be a project where they can all contribute maybe their mathematical knowledge or their scientific knowledge or just, just being able to combine all those skills together in a collaborative environment is really beneficial to their learning. It's important for kids to learn about science and engineering because really the jobs of the future are going to be in the fields of science and engineering and technology. Right now with their help it's just been, it's been amazing. It's, we've learned a lot and the terms and it's just, it's, I'm mind blown honestly. It's just, I'm speechless, it's great. I would highly recommend the Sydney Metro STEAM Challenge to other schools. Currently, we have six groups participating, but next year I would love to see this implemented in our curriculum. I would love to see all of, say, U9 participating in this because it's a really valuable project-based learning experience. I'm Beck McPhee, I'm Deputy Chief Executive of Sydney Metro. Um, thanks again to the students from Catherine McCauley and their coordinating teacher Tara Hartman for that video and of course to our Sydney Metro ambassadors involved in the program. Today I have the honour of introducing you to two of the six finalists. So first of all, congratulations to our first finalists from Sydney Secondary College Leichhardt campus. Let's take a look at their pitch for digitised Indigenous artwork at stations. Our driving question is, how can we revitalise Sydney Metro stations in order to create a more pleasant environment for the benefit of all Metro commuters and the wider community? After visiting the Metro stations, we saw an opportunity for change in its appearance and atmosphere. But how can we achieve this? The fundamental basis of our idea includes wayfinding, traditional Aboriginal works, as well as the works of local students at Macquarie Uni and other local artists. This has been demonstrated through our digital prototype, which illustrates the application of aesthetic wayfinding, digital art displays and murals to the Metro State. Our concept also integrates a curved OLED technology display. This opens up the opportunity for digital artworks to be displayed, effectively promoting the works of local artists. The displays can be utilised to stimulate the economy within the surrounding station areas by advertising local businesses and be a means of revenue for both the Metro system and the wider community. 
We also plan to allow communities to contribute and submit original works in competitions or for commissions. We will also invite Aboriginal Australians and traditional owners of the relevant land to create works that could be used for wayfinding or other spaces. There would be permission sought from each station area's elders for the usage of Aboriginal art. We will work closely with them to ensure a respectful display of works. We believe that our concept has an immense potential for scalability as not only can our ideas be implemented individually throughout the existing Sydney Metro Northwest lines, our revitalised metro station concept can also be combined into the blueprints of upcoming Sydney Metro Southwest and Metro West stations. Visual design is a universal language in which we have utilised to consistently lift vibrancy, morale and add an aesthetic visual appeal into the Sydney Metro system. Our concept benefits local communities, businesses as well as metro commuters to revitalise and bring alive the metro stations to benefit everyone. Hi, my name is Trish Johnson, head teacher of TAS at Sydney Secondary College, Leichhardt. My Year 10 iSTEM students, Emily, Erica, Eloisa and Quinn, entered Metro Minds. What a great team. They were able to use their extensive collaboration and communication skills. They showed me how wonderful they are at developing creative ideas and they back everything up with research. Well done, guys. Hey everyone, I'm Hin Jung, a member from the Sydney Secondary College Leichhardt Campus Finals team. Over the course of the challenge, I had the privilege of working alongside Erica Spaziani, Eloisa Hawkes and Emily Clark, and our amazing coordinating teacher, Ms Johnson. Reflecting on Metro Minds, it was truly an eye-opening experience to learn just how effective utilising the Stanford design process can be in generating a successful concept, and intertwining this with an unforgettable experience on our future of transport made the journey a whole lot better. I also want to thank the people over at Sydney Metro for delivering such a well-organised event and all the schools who participated. Thank you. So thank you so much for that video and your amazing ideas. Um, being responsible for all of the customer outcomes across Sydney Metro, including our public art program. This idea really spoke to me. I especially love the way you've combined the elements of customer wayfinding with Indigenous art. I think it's great that you've put the customer at the centre. Um, it's something we try to do all the time. And that you focus not just on the practical elements, but also the social and emotional needs of our customers as they go about their journey. You also have a really strong focus on connecting with the local community, so both the traditional owners of the land as well as current users of the station like Macquarie Uni students. And I particularly love the fact that you engage directly with those communities to strengthen your ideas for this proposal. And last but not least, your use of digital technology enables the use of existing services and a refresh of ideas. And that's definitely an idea I can see us adopting. So a big thank you and congratulations to the team, their teacher, Ms. Trish Johnson, Emily, Eloisa, Hyun and Erica. Thank you all. So our next finalists. This was the youngest team to achieve recognition for their idea from year seven, Parramatta High School. Let's take a look at their idea, Me Trips, an app for incentivizing travel. To begin with, we researched problems by surveying our classmates, year group, parents, and other people we knew. We asked questions related to the new Sydney Metro. Finally, we came to the conclusion that our driving question was, how can we increase the use of the Sydney Metro by educating and engaging potential users about its benefits? After weeks of concentrated debate, we came to the final innovation of creating MeTrips. MeTrips is a program that enters Metro users into a rewards draw when they use the Metro for at least eight times a month. Like the Opal system with their Opal card, when a user taps on a specific Metro stand, a screen pops up saying, congratulations, you have successfully entered the Metro draw. After tapping on, the user can learn more about MeTrips or track their progress by scanning the nearby QR codes. As the name MeTrips suggests, this is all about the user. However, they can only enter the draw once a month, so instead a different screen will show up when they tap on and have already entered the draw. These different screens will be a short sentence that tells the user the benefits of using the Metro. Some examples could include, the Metro has built a solar farm to offset 100% of electricity requirements. Or, the Metro Northwest Line has been designed to save up to 16,600 kilolitres per year. The draw happens once a month and the winner gets a different prize from whichever company is willing to sponsor us. Other people can be encouraged to use the Sydney Metro and more people will enter the draw. They can then share their experience with other people and the cycle will continue. The Sydney Metro will gain more users, increasing its popularity and usage rate. Hi there, 
My name is Lee Wise, Head Teacher Taz and STEAM Coordinator at Parramatta High School. I would like to thank all 26 students that participated in our inaugural attempt at the Metro Mind STEAM Challenge. Well done to the three teams that managed a project to submission and congratulations to that one group for successfully becoming a finalist. All groups employ design thinking with a user first approach to address the newness of the Metro to our local communities and wanted to see improved knowledge of and further benefits for our residents. Hello, and thank you for this opportunity to become finalists. I'm Krisha Basin, representing that one group from Parramatta High School, consisting of Dunika Dem, Shinyi He, Hasena Jan Nagawala, Prisha Mystery, Lucy Zhang, and our coordinating teacher, Mr. Wise. Our passion for Metro's is because of our interest in helping out our community. The design process given to us allowed us to think in all perspectives and learn about the Metro's benefits and the intricate process it required. Thank you so much to that one group for your extremely engaging pitch. What I particularly loved about this idea was your combination of the use of technology with the MeTrips terminal and behavioural or what's sometimes called nudge theory aimed at getting people to change their behaviour through information and in this case rewards. It was also a really good demonstration of incorporating feedback into the de development of the concept, testing your prototype and adopting more creativity, a bolder idea as a result of that testing. And I absolutely loved that you chose to highlight some of the sustainable outcomes that Metro is achieving, like 100% offsetting of energy use on the Northwest. I really hope that facts like that can help encourage people to try out our new Metro West service. So a big thank you and congratulations to that one group from Parramatta High School. Their teacher, Mr. Lee Wise, Krisha, Jinyi, Husseina, Prisha and Lucy. Thank you all so much. And congratulations from me on to all of the teams who are being recognised today. I'm now going to pass to my colleague, Tim Parker, to introduce our next finalists. Thanks, Beck. Look, it is fantastic. I, um, I, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I look after projects. Uh, for Sydney Metro. So I have the pleasure of looking after um, all three of our projects at the moment and seeing some of the ideas. It's just been terrific. And the other thing I think is it's going to be great because I can see some of you hopefully will make your way into engineering or environmental or design or something like that and hopefully come work for us at some point. So look guys, I think from my point of view, I, I love the first two presentations. Um, I think the first one reminded me of Vivid at, at our stations being changed every day or every month. That'd be fantastic. And I love the idea of the me trip draw. So without further ado, I think we'll look at the next STEAM finalist from Catherine and McCulley Westmead. Their entry is full STEAM ahead. And I'll now look forward to watching the video. Many commuters and public transport experience overcrowding. Overcrowding is a relevant issue at the Metro, and we at Catherine McCauley Westmead propose the implementation of time of flight sensors to combat this. Using the TOF sensors in a Metro carriage can inform commuters of how many people are present in real time within a carriage, and whether or not its capacity has been exceeded. These sensors would be located in the surveillance cameras to allow for a wide view of who's located where. Information about a train's capacity can be accessed from places like apps and on passenger information displays. However, most commuters traveling in a rush pay no attention to these, instead entering the closest carriage. This consideration of human factors has prompted us to display the train's capacity information on PSDs, which would effectively relay real-time capacity information. The additional incorporation of capacity displays to station PSDs, or platform screen doors, allows commuters to know about capacity within carriages. The displays would also incorporate the use of bright colours and universal symbols correlating with the carriage's capacity since we are attracted to brighter colours. The specific colours and symbols were determined with the gathering of data through surveys sent out to the members of the public. With our design following these results, we can decree that our capacity indicators will be effective in communicating to the public. The public would therefore be alerted of a carriage's capacity and steer clear of the full ones Alongside implementing TOF sensors within metro carriages and displaying real-time capacity information on PSDs, we propose that during the development of future stations, we adjust the positions of the escalators so that they are turned away from each other. This would prevent the likelihood of overcrowding in the centre of the station. With our proposal, our team would be able to prevent capacity from being exceeded and space out the distribution of passengers within trains. 
This would allow for effective social distancing between commuters, as well as maximum comfort and safety for travellers. Hi, my name is Tara Hartman and I'm a teacher at Catherine Macaulay Westmead. I would like to congratulate Shira, Michelle, Arwen, Patricia, Nikita and Mary on their nomination as finalists of the Metro Minds STEAM Challenge. I believe this team was successful because they really focused on the whole process and not just the product at the end. They went on a problem hunt to the Sydney Metro during their school holidays where they could look for an authentic opportunity and this also gave them a chance to empathise with the customers or the commuters of the Sydney Metro. Congratulations, girls. Proud of you. Hi, I'm Shira Chan from Catherine McCauley Westmead. Our team members are Patricia Belanzo, Michelle Bellaman, Nikita Bella, Mary Fiker, and Alan Katie for Mesa, with Miss Tara Harmon being our coordinating teacher. Our idea was to display the capacity per carriage on the Metro platform screen doors. We were extremely passionate about this idea because it would reduce overcrowding within the carriages, improving customer experiences. We approached this exciting opportunity using the design thinking process, which revolves around empathising with Metro users, then researching and prototyping the most innovative way of solving the problem. The Sydney Metro, with its advanced technology, modern design and impeccable speeds, will revolutionise the way Sydney travels. Thank you. Well, that was fantastic. Um... But from my point of view, this is this is a really important thing. It's a problem we often solve in that we have large trains, but they're in people are in the wrong places. So everyone doesn't do it. So spreading people out is great. Um, look, the problem was really, really well defined. And I, I, I love the fact you went out to look for a problem and found one and then came back for the solution. Um, I'm also really grateful that you gave me an explanation of what a tough sensor was. Um, I wasn't too sure at first, but it sounds great. There are similar systems which use weight, but I actually think that's old school. I think the TOF sounds like a much better way of doing it. I think the other thing that I was really impressed with was the displays. Um, there was one thing saying we'll put a display, but actually putting it on the platform screen doors so people can make a decision at that point. Fantastic. Really good thinking about if I'm a customer, what do I want? I don't want to look at a screen when I get onto the station. Um, I actually want to know there and then, am I going to get onto a crowded carriage or a, or a less crowded carriage? Um, the displays themselves, again, some really good thinking, not just it's full, half full or empty. Um, visual displays, really great, fantastic for people from overseas, um, our visitors, our, our tourists, when they do come back, again, that was really good. So from my point of view, great presentation, something that we'll certainly think about for our future lines, because I think it's a really, really good idea. So well done. I'd now like to move on to the next finalist, um, and this is Cumberland High School. What I'd like to do here is first of all congratulate them. This school has been involved in the challenge since the beginning, and this is the third time, so uh, a great record. So without further ado, I'm going to get the um, video so everyone can see what great idea they came up with. Increased population and population density surrounding metro stations will lead to overcrowding, thus increasing dwell times at metro stations. Here's the existing system, which has a bi-directional traffic flow. You can see the people all come off. At the same time, all the people are coming on, which creates a lot of you know, bumping into each other and um, less social distancing. Here's the system that here all the people come off, which leaves the train empty for everyone else to come on. This is a unidirectional traffic flow. The existing system only takes 23 seconds, but our proposed system takes only 18 seconds. This is a 22% decrease in dwell time using our system. Now, what are some of the benefits of this our proposed system? Well, studies have shown that unidirectional traffic flow can decrease dwell times by at least 12.5%, which is a massive decrease. This also thereby increasing network capacity without the need for additional services, so less use of resources. Uh, this also promotes social distancing as boarding and alighting passengers do not cross paths, which is now more important than ever, especially with our recent COVID situation. Seamless system, no explanation required for passengers, doors for alighting open, for doors for Boarding, essentially just a directional slow. And they don't require and they're not required at every station. They can be implemented only at the more popular or newer locations. Hello, my name is Teresa Slosky and I'm the head teacher Taz at Cumberland High School. I would like to congratulate all the teams from our school who participated in the Metro Mines competition. In particular, 
congratulations to Oliver, Nathan, Ali and Eden for being selected as finalists this year. They used the design process effectively to guide their journey from brainstorming possible ideas to their final concept proposing the use of a unidirectional system of passenger flow at train stations. Thank you. Hi, my name is Oliver and I'm here on behalf of Team Autumn from Cumberland High School. Our solution to increase network capacity was to implement a unidirectional traffic flow system to help passengers board and exit trains more efficiently. This would help enhance passengers' overall experience on the Sydney Metro. We appreciate the support of our teacher, Ms. Shizlowski, and we learnt a great deal about teamwork and the design and engineering challenges associated with a project of the scale of the Sydney Metro. Thank you so much, Cumberland High School. That was really, really good. What I particularly liked was, the, the, I think in the term in your brief, you called it the, the Spanish solution. And that was um, a reference to some of the, this, where this has been used in places like Madrid and Barcelona. As people know me, I, I love to go overseas when I'm allowed to. But what I really like to do is go to metro stations. My poor wife has drank around to metros around the world. So um, next time I, I get the chance to go to Barcelona, I'm going to be looking out for that solution. What I really like here is that it was both centred at the passenger, you know, the customer, but it was also looking at the technical solution. And, and I thought the computer simulation, uh, we have similar simulations. They're not quite as pretty as yours. I thought the, the little people on the platforms were great. I also really appreciated the problem you were trying to solve. It, it's absolutely right. Sometimes um, when you look at capacity, it's really important. So rather than just putting more trains, you said, well, how can we get those trains to be more efficient? And, and the dwell time is, is actually a really important concept that a lot of people forget about. And you know, when you look around stations around the world, that ability to get people on and off trains is really important. I think probably the last thing was, was that whilst there's some really good benefits, you also put up the other considerations. Again, that's really, really important. When you come up with a good idea, it's not just to say it's a brilliant idea, but to say, what are the other things? What are the drawbacks? And again, I thought that was really well presented. So look, fantastic, keep up the good work. I'd like to congratulate all the finalists being recognised today. It really has been a, a really enjoyable part of my day. This is one of the, the gifts to come along to some a session like this today, so I really appreciate it. I'm now going to pass on to Joe Hall, who is our ED Corporate Services, to look at the final two teams. Thank you all. Thanks, Tim. Gosh, just incredible to see some of the submissions so far and a huge credit to all of our schools. We are definitely in good hands for the future, seeing some of the suggested innovations so far. So we're going to move on to our final two finalists for the morning. First up, we are going to hear from St Maroons College at Stanmore. So let's take a look at their pitch. Our problem statement, how can we cater the protection of passengers to ensure we minimise the possibility of injuries and reduce the possible spread of viruses and bacteria in Sydney Metro trains. Let's find a way to decrease the severity of injuries sustained by people when collisions do occur. From there, NanoX Tech was created. NanoX is a two-layered shock absorbing and antimicrobial surface that we would like to implement on frequently contacted surfaces like stanchions and all protruding surfaces on the Sydney Metro train. We use biomimicry. We have drawn inspiration from the honeycomb shape. It is known to absorb impact energy with its gradual collapsing and high load carrying ability. It will be made from material called sorbethane. Sorbethane is a viscoelastic polymer. It will deform under load and transmit forces in all directions and then return to its original shape when the load is removed. We have also drawn inspiration for our antimicrobial surface from the wings of a dragonfly, which are covered with microscopic structures known as nanopillars. These small pillars will penetrate the bacterial biofilm and cause it to rupture and die. What our material does is increase the time required to stop the momentum of the passenger. If this time is increased, then the force of the impact is decreased. If the impact time is short, for example without the material, then the force of impact increases and may cause severe damage to the passenger's body. We add the aspect of antiviral, antibacterial and shock absorption to focus on the health and safety of the community, especially for the elderly and young children who are more susceptible to falling when the train is in motion and have weaker immune system. NanoX reduces spread of bacteria and disease. 
everyone. My name is Sarah Wilson and I am the STEM teacher at St. Maroons College. I'd really like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our really dedicated STEM team, Selena Nguyen, Ishan Jane, Pat Fung and Louise Valeshion. They worked incredibly hard to develop their ideas and applied critical and reflective thinking throughout the engineering design process. Thank you to Sydney Metro for facilitating this event and encouraging young people to engage in project-based learning. I'd like to thank Tina, Carolyn, and our Sydney Metro Ambassador Rowan for all of your support throughout this. Good morning, everyone. I am Pat Fung, and I'm representing the STEM Room College STEM team with the help of our teachers, Ms. Wilson, and my teammate, Selena Nguyen, Isan Chan, and Louisa Blessian. We have great nano actex using design thinking. We identify safety as an area of concern and strive to create the safe and accessible environment. The ambassador stressed the importance of reflection and collaboration. Through this, we discovered that Sydney Metro is a multifaceted organization that engages the community, including STEM students, in their own design thinking processes. That is fantastic. Thank you so much to St. Maroons. At Sydney Metro, safety is one of our top priorities, so it was fabulous to be reviewing this submission particularly in the context that we're all experiencing at the moment as well. And your submission addresses two issues that we have at Metro, so really good to see that consideration. The last 12 months have highlighted for us the risks associated with viruses and bacteria, so it was really good to see this submission tackling a real and current issue. And as I was reviewing it, I, I have to admit, I'm thinking about all the other ways a material like this could be used. So many different industries could benefit from it, so well done. I really loved that you you've taken inspiration from nature and incorporated that into this submission. Gosh, there's so much that we can learn and great to, uh, great to see that as part of your consideration. In particular, that antimicrobial surface of the dragonfly wings. I didn't, didn't know that, so that was a great thing to learn through this submission. And also just those insights from biomimicry and nanotechnology. Really, really interesting to understand what's happening at the molecular level and then building out new possibilities from that. So well done to you all. One of the other things just I just wanted to highlight as well is your consideration on the design integration as well. So really powerful that potentially this product, which has the potential to protect our travelling public, would most likely not even know it was there. So well done to you. A big thank you to Ms Sarah Wilson, Louisa, Ishan, Selena and Pat. So our final team for today is from Cranbrook School. So let's take a look at their submission. This issue is of the utmost importance for people bound to wheelchairs in our society. Those people can be subjected to horrible injuries on public transport if not cared for properly. We would like to propose a special wheelchair locking system that will ensure their safety is centered. The core of the idea is that the wheelchair can be held in place within the cabin in the metro system while it's moving. Firstly, the wheelchair user will tap the opal card on the sensor located next to the wheelchair. Bed. This opal card will be programmed to give access to the system so no one else can operate it and possibly vandalize it. The card itself could be changed as necessary, it could have a different colour and it could even be accompanied by things like price reductions or even a 100% fare reduction. Next, the clamps of the system, as shown here, will open and the user will slowly walk back into the track-like path. There are sensors underneath the clamps of the system that essentially act as pressure plates. Once these sensors detect weight and no movement, it will slowly extend the strips and wrap around the wheel. It will automatically adjust to the shape of the wheel for maximum efficiency. In order to exit the system, one must simply push a button situated next to the passenger and the clamps will unfurl, allowing the person to exit. To prevent incidents, this button will only work during stops and emergencies. We've realised that if there is a mechanical or electrical problem, the system could dry fire or misfire and trigger. This can be prevented by the maintenance of which we will maintain and clean the interior in order to prevent glitches like this. In an ideal world, the system received regular maintenance to make sure that it is safe. This design won't hopefully end as soon as it is employed, but will continue to improve the safety and the experience of these people. 
Hi, I'm Mackenzie Peterson, and together with Adam Karen, we teach ICM at Cranbrook. We would like to congratulate all the students involved in this challenge. You approached it with creativity and enthusiasm and should be really proud of what you've designed. Well done. It is such an honour to be called as a finalist of the Metro Mind STEAM competition. My team from Cranbrook, consisting of Ethan Tan, Cormac Watt, Charlie Shin, Hugo Andres, Xavier Sorrenti and Ben Voy, had created REM, a wheelchair locking system, with the help of our coordinating teacher, Ms Peterson, and Mr Curran. Through the design thinking process, we had the charge to empathise with those in wheelchairs, as we had seen such problems with wheelchairs falling over in wet weather in the Metro system, and therefore we were able to create a solution. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations to our Cranbrook team. I really love that these final two submissions have been a focus on safety and wellbeing, which is a core value for us at Sydney Metro. So, and Metro is really proud to be Australia's first fully um, accessible railway as well. So it's been great to see this Cranbrook submission using the data to identify a problem statement to work to improve the way we support our wonderful community members who have a disability and use a wheelchair. I know as part of the submission, and we've just heard again there, you reflect on putting yourself in the shoes of those currently using wheelchairs. This is such a critical part of any customer or design thinking process to inform design. So thank you for doing that. I liked the wraparound design um, and the technology and also the rapid prototype model that you created just to be able to explain your idea further. Um, and in your submission, you, you also talk about you took that out and tested it with customers to get further feedback and to continue to refine that wheelchair locking device. So well done to you. And I do know that possibly not, not doesn't have to be specific to wheelchairs, but the design has a level of flexibility to be able to cater for all mobility devices as well or for other mobility devices. And I really enjoyed learning about your thinking about the Opal card trigger. So no need for any extra devices or complicated booking systems, but great to see, you, you know, you're thinking about that end to end, uh, how, how this system could be implemented from an end to end perspective. And the same with, I know for, for those on the call, the team considered the implementation and maintenance as well. So they thought about what potential issues there might be and worked through to build them into their end design. So a really big thank you to you and congratulations. Thanks to Ms. Mackenzie Pedersen, Mr. Adam Caron, and Hugo, Xavier, Ethan, Benjamin, Cormac, and Charlie. Congratulations to all of our finalists and to everyone involved in this year's challenge. I've really enjoyed being a part of it and, uh, and seeing so many great innovations coming forward. And I'm gonna pass you back to Anne Purcell. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Joe. Wow, that was amazing. And it's incredible to see all those finalists and, and hear those ideas again. Before I invite Peter back for his final comments, I wanted to also acknowledge our public communications team who uh, managed the education program, in particular, Tina Chin, Carolyn Hatchwell, Alison Markula, and the graphic design team who've worked really hard to ensure that the 2021 competition went ahead despite all the challenges. I'd also like to thank our Metro Mind ambassadors who've been mentioned earlier as they come from across our organisation and did a wonderful job for visiting the schools and mentoring the students. So thank you, ambassadors. Also, I'd like to thank Albert Chua and Sam Phillips who worked with me as part of the first round um, judging panel that shortlisted these teams. It was a real pleasure to see all the submissions and it was very challenging shortlisting today's finalists particularly for me, who in the live event usually burst into tears about this point because I'm so amazed and overwhelmed with emotion at the wonderful work that you guys have done. So you've all been saved that because online it doesn't seem quite the same. But anyway, now uh, I'd like, like to see what Peter thinks. Yes, hi, Anne, thanks. Um, oh, I'm absolutely blown away. Um, I uh, hadn't uh, had the opportunity to see those videos uh, in advance and uh, I was quite captivated. It's amazing just the level of of thought and appreciation of the real world issues that uh, we are dealing with every day at Sydney Metro that was um, woven through each of those presentations. And in, in each of the six, I think there are direct applications of the kind of thinking and the kind of problems that you're trying to solve that we are working with at the moment, be it in station design, be it around safety, in the way that we try and encourage people to use the metros, you know, and try to be as attractive and accessible to as many people as possible, uh, bringing artwork in, all those things we do day to day. And we have people who are doing that in, in real time. As Tim said, I think some of the graphic design um, probably even matches the capabilities that are in Anne's team with the videos that we like to produce. Uh, I love the uh, uh, the effort that's gone in there as well. 
So yeah, I, I'm just, um, as I said, blown away. I think it's just amazing how, how well um, everyone involved has sort of thought outside the box and, and really kind of demonstrates that um, there's certainly no monopoly on good ideas. That is so true. Thank you very much, Peter. Appreciate those final remarks. That's it for the STEAM Challenge this year, sadly. Thank you for your support and your participation. All the finalist prizes and certificates will be organised and sent out through the coordinating teachers. Today's finalists uh, have won a $600 voucher for each team, plus a $300 voucher for their school and coordinating teacher. So congratulations. As Peter mentioned, we do hope to see you in 2022 face-to-face, -face, and there'll be an invite coming out for the 2021 finalists to a special uh, Metro Minds launch in March next year, where maybe I'll be able to do some real life crying for you all. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank you to all those that presented and all the schools and take care and stay safe. See you next year.